Online Media is now 2.40 and we are ready for Roots Magic to show us everything that is new and awesome with Roots Magic this year. Is that right? Yep. Okay, let's give a round of applause for Roots Magic. Thanks. Okay, so what I'm going to be showing you is Roots Magic 8. Now, before anybody even tries to ask when 8's coming out, don't, because we're not, we, we don't even know ourselves when it's going to be coming out. We're getting really close, and that's why we want to actually do this show, to show you guys where we actually really are. So you kind of get a feel for where, where we actually are with releasing version 8. Um, for those of you who have used Roots Magic in the past, the main thing we wanted to try to do, there were two main things we wanted to try to accomplish with Roots Magic 8. One was to come up with a native Mac version, okay? We'll have that. What I'm showing you is the Windows version. The Mac version looks exactly like this, okay? Except it's got Mac stuff on it. But it looks just like this. Uh, if you want to see the Mac version, uh, in, if you want to see it in action, come by the booth. We actually have a Mac there where we can show you Roots Magic 8 running on the Mac. So if you want to see for yourself that it really does exist, just do that. Uh, the second thing is we wanted to make the program less clicky. One of the biggest complaints we get uh, with Roots Magic 7 is there's too many clicks, I, it, there's too many screens I have to go through to get to things. So that's what we're, that, those were our two main goals. We have a bunch of new features that we've added in, but the, I'm, I'm gonna kind of just give you a quick overview since I only have 15 minutes to do this. Okay, one of the things you'll notice, th this is a main screen, and it looks somewhat similar to, Root, to Roots Magic 7, those of you who are familiar with it. Um, and it, and it works, looks and feels very close to the same. What is new is over here on the left-hand side is this, is this menu over on the side. And that is where you're going to access every feature from inside of Roots Magic, right from there. Okay, so instead of, instead of having to pop up a screen to look at sources or pop up another screen to look at places, they're all right here. So I'm going to go down through these real quick right now, and I come back and, and cover them just a little bit more detail in a second. So right now, I'm on the people screen, and this is a screen that you're actually probably used to in in the current Roots Magic, and you still have all the same type of views. You have your pedigree view, you have a family view, and it works very much close to the same: dad, mom, the, grand, the grandparents, and the kids. You have your descendant view. Okay, it's, it looks the same, except that you can collapse families within the, within the group. You also have your, your person view. This looks and works just like in Roots Magic 7. And you have a new view called a couple view. And this is similar to the, what was called the family list in Roots Magic 7, which used to be just a separate pop-up. It's now built right in here. Now, the, that's, all, that's all the ways that you can look at people. But we also have places. Okay, so this right here, you switch to the places view, and now I can see everything I, and do everything I need to do with places. I can see and do everything I need to do with sources. Everything I need to see and do with media. Uh, oh, ignore, ignore all those X's. That's, that's from me bringing my database over and forgetting to bring my uh, pictures over onto this laptop. Uh, you have all of your tasks. Tasks are gonna work similar to research logs, to-do lists. It's a kind of a superset combination. A very, very powerful feature. I don't know if I'll be able to cover it as much as I'd like to in this, um, but tasks are much more powerful than research logs even. So those of you guys who like research logs, you guys will, will, will love tasks. Your addresses, all your different search commands are right here. The ability to search for people, the ability to do advanced searches, uh, web search, uh, and search everywhere, where it looks everywhere in your database. It looks for, through all your notes and your sources and your media and everything. Those are all right there. Publish, this is where anything that you're going to kind of publish out, so this is where you're gonna find all of your reports, all of your books, which are basically taking a bunch of reports together and combining them into a book that has a table of contents and a common index for the whole thing. You also have all of our on, your online. So this is where you're going to access your interface with Ancestry and with Family Search. We also have what's called My Roots Magic. That's where we let you upload your, your database to our server to create your own custom websites. And finally, uh, what we call a shareable drive, 
in, the, in Roots Magic 7, it was known as shareable CD. That's where you could create a CD of all of your data and your pictures that you could share with family. Well, it turns out a lot of these computers nowadays don't have CDs anymore, okay? And so we have a lot of people saying, I wish I could create these, but put it on a flash drive. Well, now you will be able to. This will let you create that shareable thing to put on a flash drive. You can send the flash drive to your family and they can, they can view and do all that stuff from their own little flash drive. All the features that were in Roots Magic before are still going to be there. You'll still have Roots Magic to go, so you'll still be able to take, take your program with you on a flash drive and just plug it in and run right from there. Okay, so now let's go back and show you a little bit of detail on these, on these different screens. Okay, the, the pedigree screen, like I say, it works almost exactly the same way as it does in 7. You, you can navigate using the keyboard or your mouse. You can move up and down the arrows to move back and forth generations. If you want to edit a person, you double click on that person. And that will open up their edit screen right there. The edit screen is simple, similar, but not exact. Okay, there's there's some additional there's some additional functionality in that. Let me shrink that down just a little bit. There's some additional functionality here in the edit screen that we didn't have in seven. Um, one, you can now see the events from the immediate family members right inside of that edit screen, and you can turn those on or off. So right now, instead of just having his birth, marriage residence and you know death and burial you're also seeing you're also seeing the birth of his spouse his child his children you're seeing those other events so you're building a timeline uh, and you can see all of these different things in context these events even though they belong to other people are completely editable right from the screen just like his own events are you can edit the events of these other family members if you need to okay the, the, the next thing is when you highlight, let's, let's go ahead and highlight this birth. In, in Roots Magic 8, when you highlight it, you can edit this over here on the right side, and that, we've always had that, we've always had that. But what we've been limited to is for your sources and your media and all of that, you had to click a button and that popped up another screen. Well, no longer. Now, you can actually see right up there, underneath the fields that you can edit, you've got your sources, and you can add a new source or cite an existing source for this birth right there. The media, you can add media or or uh, or edit media from right there. Same thing with your tasks. Everything is right there. You're not having to you're not having to uh, move in and out to do things. For example, I'm going to go up here to the person screen to the person, and if that person has sources, you can see them listed right there. Okay, before you couldn't do that, if Bruce Magic said, oh, this, this, the person has three sources. Now you actually see them, when you click on the citation, it slides that in, and you can actually edit your citation details right there from that person's edit screen. It's not a whole separate pop-up, another separate screen. You can see the quality, If you, you can add media to the source, you can, you can see who else is using that source, everything is right there. Once you've made whatever changes or seen what you want, you click the little back arrow, boop, you're right back where you were. And you can just move on, move on to something else. Media works the same way. So if, let, let's, let's say I got, let's say I want to add a, a, a picture for the birth. I highlight the birth, I see media, I say I want to add new media, and I can either add brand new media or I can say select existing media if I want to add, if I want to basically add a picture that I've already added to this person, I can do that. But I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to say, let's add a picture, and I'm going to go to media, media, and I'm just, I'll just pick any any picture right here. I'm just going to pick a picture just so you can see, and I can add a caption. Okay, and now that now what, when my birth is highlighted, there's my picture right there, and any pictures that are attached to that birth, they're right there. Now, once they're on there, if I want to edit that, I just click on it. The picture slides in. I can edit the caption, the description. I can click on the picture to see the full resolution, zoom in and out. When I'm done with the media, I just slide it out of the way. Okay, so no longer, like I say, there's no longer going 
five and six dialogues deep to get to something and having to go escape, 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 and then go into something else and going back and forth. Everything is right there. Okay. Now, one of the most popular things we've been asked to do is what I'm about to show you. Usually, when you open up an edit screen, it locks you out of everything behind it, right? In other words, if I were to click back here, it would go ding. Well, it doesn't ding anymore. If I go back here and click, I can get, go to that stuff. I can go look at places. I can work on sources. I can even open up another edit screen. Okay, so I can have three edit screens open at once. So I can just switch right back and forth. So I can actually see more than one person's edit screen at a time. I can work with them. And when I'm done with it, I just close it up and, and I'm good to go. I'm back to the other one. One thing that's really cool on the edit screen, you notice up here on the edit screen, it shows the spouses and the parents. Okay, They're, to the right of them, there's a little, there's a little head, a little, a little person right there. If I click on that, it gives me the option to switch to that person or to switch to any of the other family members. So if I wanted to see his wife, I click on that and I just switch to her. The edit screen is just switched to her. I'm now on her edit screen and I can make whatever changes I want. Once I'm done editing her, I just click that back arrow. It saves her information and comes right back to him. So I don't have to go in and out of, of edit screens to do that. I can just do that really quickly right there. Okay. Um, data, the database themselves, they also are in separate windows. I'm not going to spend the time to show you that. But if you open up a second database, it's in a completely independent window. So if you are using more than one monitor, you can now put each database on a separate on a separate monitor. You're, no, you're not limited to having to keep it in that one window on the one monitor. Okay, um, show you a couple. Just I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how places work, and you just realize that all these other screens work almost exactly the same way. So this is a list of all my places, and as I highlight a place over here on the right, I can edit any of the information about the place. Okay. I can also add media or tasks or anything like that to the, to the place. But I also can see how many events, and then I can also see if there's any place details. So for example, Aberdeen Grays Harbor has two place details. So if I click on that, the place details slide in. And now, when I move through them, I'm actually editing the place details. So as I switch from one screen to the other, this edit follows along and you're always going to be able to edit whatever you're seeing on the screen, including adding media or tasks or whatever to the place details. Sources, same way. If I go here, here's the list of all my master sources and I can see how many citations there are for a source. So this book, for example, has 124 citations. I click on that. There's my list of citations, and if I select one of those, I'm editing the citation details. I can also see, uh, I can also add media to the citation, I can do any of those types of things. If I wanted to add media, just click add media, and I'm adding media right there. So, like I say, what we're doing is what's called flattening that interface. So, it's easy to get from one thing to the other. Okay, if I do a search, if I do a search, it's going to take me to the search screen. I'm going to, I'm going to look for, I'm going to look for all the Leroy. Uh, I'm just going to look for all the Leroy's. So I'll just leave it at that. I can tell it to do the search. It finds all my Leroy's. There's all my Leroy's. It doesn't matter whether they're middle names. It doesn't matter, you know, whether they're first name, middle name, whatever. There's all my Leroy's. Okay. Normally, if you do a search, it pops up a screen, it does a search, and then you say, I want to go to that person and do that and, and see something about that person. Well, I can do that. I can say, go to that person, and it jumps to the pedigree. In the past, now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to look at another one of those people that was in that search, I had to go into the search screen and redo that search. No longer. When I go to that search screen, those results are still there. Those results will stay there until I'm done with them. So I can go in and out all I want. So, are we down to time? I think we are at time. Okay. The version 8, like I say, we don't know when it's going to come out. Over at our booth, 
Uh, if you buy Roots Magic 7, which is still the current version, you will get a free copy of version 8 when it does come out. That's, that's part of our, our special today. So if you have any questions, come over there. We've got it, and we can, we can go into more detail on it for This you. is awesome. And for one lucky person here today, they get that Roots yep. Magic 7 and the key to Roots Magic 8 when it's released. Is that right? That's right. And a couple other goodies, including this bag, but also some more software in here. So will you do the honors and pick yep. it? Okay, next three. I'll go over the whole thing. Okay, two, zero, four, three, three, four. Okay, last three digits are three, three, four. Anybody get that one? We have a winner back here. Raise your hand up high. Wonderful, congratulations. Congratulations, this is great. Yes, of course. And if you have any more questions, then uh, you can meet down here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. So.